So in this video, I'm going to go through introducing what is standard form and how we convert numbers in ordinary form to standard form and vice versa. So before we go on to introducing standard form more formally, let's look at how we commonly work with numbers. So in common society, when dealing with very big or very small numbers, we make it easier to not only say, but read and calculate and understand the number by either looking at rounding or by changing the units. So as you can see in this example that's shown in the picture, which is a snapshot taken from the National Lottery, you can see here that the actual jackpot was advertised as being an estimated value of 6.8 million. Now, they've used the word million as a change of units simply because really they don't really want to want to write 6800000 because that can somewhat be confusing. Also, without the use of commas, it can sometimes be difficult to read. Is it 680,000? Is it 68 million? Is it 6.8 million? Who knows? And also, when it comes to rounding, if the actual jackpot, which I actually researched, was £6,867,823, it takes up a lot of valuable time to not only say, but also to read as well. So, And also, if, let's say, you were lucky enough to win the jackpot and you shared it between th four people or two people, it's a lot easier for you to divide a rounded up as, um, estimated value than it would be to actually divide the actual value by four. And other areas where you can potentially use big or small numbers could be majority in physics and science, where you're dealing with the speed of light or the distance uh, from Earth to the sun, the size of an atom or the width of a strand of hair in metres. So it really is in, in regards to maths, it's important that only you're looking at the digits, you're also looking at the units used as well. The units make a massive difference to what we're actually dealing with. And like I said, if you were wanting to calculate the distance from your journey from home to school, then you would probably use a more realistic unit that would accommodate that number. So, for example, you wouldn't measure that distance in centimetres because that is going to be a huge number, regardless of how far you uh, need to travel to get to school. However, if you wrote it in kilometres, then that digit that you would read out, the number you would actually read out, would be considerably small. So, for example, um, if you were to live, I don't know, uh, two kilometres away from school, then you could say that's 200 metres. You could say it's 20,000 centimetres. You could even go to millimetres and go even further. So units make a massive difference to how you read numbers out and what they actually represent. Now, taking another look at place of value, which is what we look at when we're actually dealing with numbers, is looking at uh, the typical place value that you would alert at primary school. Now, the key thing you need to learn when it comes to place value is that every next sort of place of value is going to be a multiple of 10. So, for example, if you start off with the units, to get from units to tens, we times by 10, to get from tens to 100, we times by 10, to get from hundreds to 1,000, we times by 10, and I can sure you can kind of guess the general picture that for every next sort of place value, all you are doing is times it by 10. And likewise, if you wanted to go in the opposite direction, then rather than by times it by 10, we would be divided by 10 instead. And that also works when you go to numbers below units. So for example, tenth to a unit is again times by 10. Hundredth to a tenth is times by 10 again. Now again, taking another sort of investigative look on how we actually read and write numbers. So we can actually represent these place values as powers of 10. So if we take, let's say, 10 to start off with, I can write 10 as just 10. Or I can write it as a power of 10, which is therefore going to be 10 to the power of 1. If we look at 100, I could write that as a power of 10, which is to the power of 2, or 10 squared. 1,000 is going to be 10 cubed. 10,000 is going to be 10 to the power of 4. And one thing that you probably are noticing as I'm writing these numbers down and writing down their sort of the numbers in terms of powers of 10 that the actual power refers to how many zeros you can see and as i've said that i've actually made a mistake on 100,000 so let's just correct that to five a million is going to be 10 to the power of six and so we can rewrite these numbers or this place value as a power of 10 
Now, one thing you may have been asked is why do we use commas? Usually when you're reading numbers out or you wouldn't necessarily find it on some of the newer calculators or you might do, is purely to make it easier for you to read. So when you are typing numbers into a calculator, you don't need to enter that comma because your calculator is like a built-in number machine. Uh, however, when you're reading out, it's definitely a lot easier for you to work with commas as a way of reading out. So for example, um, if I know that 10 million is going to have seven zeros. Now, if I look at that number at first glance, it would be difficult for me to see, is it going to be a million? Is it 10 million? Is it 100 million? I'm not too sure. So what they tend to do is starting from the right is after every three digits, we put a little comma to make it easier for you to read. So this is the hundreds, tens units. The next ones are the thousand, the number of thousands you've got. And the next one is the amount of millions that you have. And again, it's written in the sort of set in the format of hundreds, tens units. So it would be 623,626 or 462 million. And then it goes on to those words. So that's it's important that we look at this. Now, if we move on to units. Now, units doesn't have any zeros, so that's just going to be one. And that will be 10 to the power of zero because there aren't any zeros represents it. Now, a tenth is represented as 0 0.1. And how we represent that as a power of 10. Now, again, following the patterns as we're going down and making the numbers bigger and going in this direction, you can see that the powers are all increasing by one. Well, if we're going the opposite direction, we're going to decrease the power by one. So a tenth, although you can write it as 0 0.1, can also be written as 10 to the power of minus one. And likewise, a hundredth would be 0 0.01, and that can be represented as a power of 10, as 10 to the power of minus 2. And again, if you think about it, it's how many zeros you have before that zero. So here we've got one before, so that's why it's minus 1. In a hundredth, we've got two zeros, which is why it's minus 2. So again, although this is really doesn't really come into standard form, hopefully the powers of 10 kind of makes a little bit sense going forward. So now let's introduce what standard form actually is. Now, standard form is just another way of writing any number. Now, it's a number that's more commonly that's either really big or really small, and therefore is going to be slightly rounded, although it is possible for you to not round that number up. Now, that's quite a grey area, quite a high level area where you'll see that sort of situation where numbers have been rounded to make it easier for you to say. But generally speaking, in this particular area of standard form in maths, at the level that we're going to be working at, it's just going to follow this purpose. So in maths, another way of writing a number is to write it in standard form. Now, writing numbers in standard form um, is has a particular for format. Now, this format is that you will have a number, which we're just going to call A, times 10 to the power of something, which we're going to, that something and that power we're going to call N. Now, the key thing for you to note is that this value of A must be a number that is between 1 and 9.9 .9 recurring. So it has to be a number that is between that boundary. Now, if I was to write it as an sort of inequality, then it would be A is between, now it can equal 1, however, it can't equal 10. And so I could write it as an inequality like so. So first things first, A has to be a number between 1 and 10. It can be 1, can't be 10. So in other words, it's got to be a number between 1 and 9.9 .9 recurring. Now, the power of N... Now, this n must be an integer, so it must be a whole number. It can't be a fraction. It can't be a decimal. It can be positive for when you're dealing with big numbers, and it can also be negative if you're dealing with numbers that are less than 1. So in order for a number to be in standard form, it has to be, a has to be a number between 1 and 10, and n has to be a whole number. So, for example, I could have 3.4 times 10 to the 6. That's absolutely fine because this is a number between 1 and 9.9 .9 recurring, and this number here is a whole number. If I was to have 3.06 times 10 to the minus 8, again, absolutely fine because that is a number that's between 1 and 10, and this is an integer. And again, even though it's negative, it's absolutely fine. I can't have, let's say, 12.8 times 10 to the power of 8 because this is not a number so this is not in standard form it does represent a number 
it's just not written in correct standard form it's because this number 12.8 is not a number between 1 and 9.9 .9 recurring and likewise if I had 4.206 times 10 to the 1.5 again this does represent a number it's just not written in correct standard form because this the power is not given as an integer so once we've got kind of got an understanding of what standard form actually looks like let's have a look at the method of how we do this now this might seem very very confusing before going through some examples but I would strongly recommend of making a note of these three steps and like I said you might want to sort of edit or refine them or write them in your own words when we go through some examples so the first thing now again with practice you won't have to follow these three steps this is just to get you started and just my interpretation of a way of teaching you um, standard form so the first thing I do is underline the number ignoring any starting or ending zeros middle zeros are absolutely fine then with this underlined number you want to write this as a number between 1 and 9.9 .9 recurring and that will be your a value and that's what will be worth one mark in your test or in your exam now the next thing to find your end value so comparing the number written in part 2 which will be a number between 1 and 9.9 .9 recurring and the original number count the number of places the decimal point needs to move in a to become the original number so if you're moving it to the right and it's going to be positive and if you're moving it to the left n is going to be negative now one key thing you need to remember is that positive powers of 10 represent big numbers negative powers of 10 represent small numbers when, we, when I say small numbers numbers that are going to be less than one so from this let's have a look at some examples so if we deal with our first example so let's just go on to get in a pen so here I've got number one and we've got three with six zeros so it's going to be 300,000 and another one so following the first steps what I'm going to do is I'm going to underline the numbers ignoring any zeros at the start or at the end so in this case I've got three so I'm going to write that as three now I'm always going to have times ten that's always going to be given so the only thing I now need to find is the power so starting with three and in three the decimal point is going to be there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of places I need to move this decimal point to get to from this number here to that number there. So going from 3 I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so I've moved it 6 places so then the power is going to be 6 so the correct answer then is going to be 3 times 10 to the power of 6 if I look at question 2 so here I've got 6700 so again I'm going to underline the numbers ignoring any zeros at the front or at the um, end so here I've got 67 now I'm going to write 67 as a number between 1 and 10 and that number would be 6.7 and I'm always going to have times 10 so let's just put that times 10 so the only thing I'm now going to do is work out the power now in 6.7 the decimal point is here but I want I don't want 6.7 I want 6700 so putting the decimal point where it is in this in my a value I'm now going to count how many places I need to move it to get to the original number so it's one two three so that's going to be 6.7 times 10 to the power of three now moving on to question three so again I've got one seven six eight with four zeros so again if I underline the numbers ignoring any zeros at the front or at the end I get one seven six eight now I need to write this number as a number between one and ten which is going to be one point seven six eight again I always have times ten and again why is it times ten because that's how we count and again we've said previously why that's going to be times ten looking at place values so the next thing I now need to do is put my decimal point where it is in A and I want it to get right to the very end like where it is in, in the original question so here I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so then my final answer is going to be 1.768 times 10 to the power of 7 moving on to question 4 
Again, I've got two, three, zero, four, and then I've got uh, five zeros. No, I've got six zeros rather. One, two, three, one, two, three. And again, underlining the numbers before all the zeros start, so I get, and I need to write that as a number between one and 10, so that's gonna be 2.304. Now, again, times 10. Now, as you can see, in the original number, my decimal point is here, but in my A value, my decimal point is here. So what I need to do is count how many places I need to move this decimal point. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the correct answer then is going to be, or writing this number in standard form, is going to be 2.304 times 10 to the power of nine. Now, one thing you note is that my A values have different amounts of numbers after the decimal point. And that can vary depending on the question that you're dealing with. So it's just something to bear in mind. Now with question number five, uh, let's get a different colour pen. So with number five, I've got one, three, four. Now as you can see in this number here, I've got no zeros. But again, I can write this in standard form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to underline all the numbers because I've got no zeros. And I'm going to write this number as a number between one and ten, which is going to be 1.34. Now again, going back to, it's always going to be times 10. Now in the original number, my decimal point is here. But in my A value, my decimal point is here. So I need to count how many times I've moved the decimal point. Well, I've moved it 1, 2. So it's going to be 1.34 times 10 to the power of 2. And then finally, when we move on to question 6. Question 6, I've got 14.7. So again, if I underline the number, ignoring any zeros at the start or at the end, I've got, uh, I'm going to write this as 1.47 times 10. Now, as you can see, the decimal point in this question is here. But in my A value, the decimal point is here. So all I've done is I've moved the decimal point one place. So that's going to be 1.47 times 10 to the power of one and finally moving on to question seven we've got 8.2 now if i underline that as you can see this number is already a number between one and ten so that's just 8.2 times 10 now i've not moved the decimal point at all so it's just 10 to the power of zero which i'll be honest with question seven it seems quite pointless for you to write it in standard form but if you really pushed and you saw this in a textbook which is probably the only place that you'd find it, then that would be the correct answer. So what is important is you go through the steps and hopefully those steps that we mentioned here uh, previously do now make a little bit more sense. Now, one thing you may have noticed with all these seven examples that they are all numbers bigger than one. So, and also that all the powers are positive as well. So it's important you able, you're able to recognize when do you have a positive power and when do you will have a negative power. So if you move on to the next set of questions, in questions 8 to 12, as you can see here, we've all got numbers starting with uh, zeros. But the same method applies. So if I start off with question 8, so here we've got 0 0.00005. Now I'm going to ignore all the zeros at the start, and I'm just going to underline the non-zero numbers as we have. So here we're going to have 5 times 10 because you're always going to have times 10. Now as you can see my decimal point is here in A but the actual decimal point in the original number is here. So if I count how many times I've moved the decimal point now notice that I'm now going from right to left so I'm actually going in the opposite direction. Now if I count how many times I've moved the decimal point I've moved it one, two, three, four, five places so it's going to be five times ten to the power of minus five. So it's five places to the left, and because this is a number less than one, it's gonna be a negative power. So likewise with number nine, I've got 0 0.001. So if I underline the number, ignoring any zeros at the front this time, not the end like the previous example of previous questions. So here I'm gonna have one times 10. And here my original decimal point is there, but my decimal point in A is here, so I moved it one, two, three places, so it's gonna to be to the power of minus three. 
And likewise with number 10, I've got 0 0.00008 0 0 0 0 0 So if I underline the number that I'm working with, and again, you can zeros in the middle are fine, you just ignore any zeros at the front or at the end. So I'm going to write this number as a number between 1 and 10, which is going to be 1.08 times 10. Now in my A value, my decimal point is here, but in the original question, in original number, it's there. So I now need to count how many times I need to move the decimal point. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I moved it 5 places, so it'd be to the power of minus 5. With regards to question 11, I've got 0 0.00098. So again, underline the number, ignoring any zeros at the front or the back. So I've got 98. I write this as a number between 1 and 9.9, .9, which is 9.8 times 10. Now in my A value, which is here, my decimal point is there. And I and my original number, the decimal point is here. So what I need to do is now count how many places I've moved the decimal point. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So then it'll be 9.8 times 10 to the power of minus 4. And then finally, with regards to question 12, I've got 0 0.00091. Again, underline the number, write as a number between 1 and 10, which is 9.1. And then all we're doing is I put the decimal point of how I've written it in A, and that's where it is there. That's where the decimal point, here is where the decimal point is in the original number. So I now need to count how many places I need to move it. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 places. So it would be 9.1 times 10 to the power of minus 4. So that's converting ordinary numbers to standard form. Let's have a look at going in the opposite direction. So to convert standard form to ordinary numbers, so to get out of standard form, then we can write it in this following method. So we start by writing the value of a. Now the power is all about moving the decimal point. Now, in some cases, you might have any notion of finding little shortcuts like the power tells you how many zeros to move or it tells you how many zeros are at the front, which may be fine. However, when you start dealing in this topic and the topic gets a little bit more complicated and has to do with the questions, you might find that that's not always the case. So try not to take it for granted. The power always refers to how, where, in what direction and how many places you need to move the decimal point. So for step two, we move the decimal point to the right if the power is positive, left if it's negative, by the same number as the power. And then the final step is ensure you've written the final answer neatly and that it's got a maximum of one decimal point. And again, if that makes absolutely no sense to you at all, do not worry. I will go through and explain what these three steps mean in the next following example. So I certainly would recommend copying those three steps. So let's have a look at some examples then. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert these numbers into ordinary form. So with question one, we've got 3.6 times 10 to the power of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by writing my A value, which is 3.6. And I've got a power of positive 3, so I'm going to move the decimal point three places to the right, going in this direction, basically to make the number bigger. So from this, I'm going to move it three places. So that's one, two, three. And that's where my decimal point is going to go. And in these empty spaces, all I'm going to do is write down, uh, fill them in with zeros. Now, if you look at this number here, I've got two decimal places, which you're not allowed to have. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, like I said, it's not really valid. However, this is my working out. So the correct answer for this is going to be 3,000. 600. So this green box is just purely to help me, is that my working out? I wouldn't leave it as my final answer and I wouldn't certainly scribble decimal places out because again it's not very mathematical, you definitely should not have two decimal, plate, two decimal points in a particular number. So if we look at number question number two, we've got 5.87 times 10 to the power of 7. So if I start off by writing my A value which is 5.87 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the decimal point seven places to the right, making this number bigger. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the empty gaps with zeros and then I'm going to write down the final answer again so it's 587 with five zeros and I've wrote down six because I've got a bit of zero crazy and there we go and there is our final answer oh, let's get a pen rather than a rubber and with number three we've got 5.023 times 10 to the power of 5 so if I start off by writing my a value down I'm going to move the decimal point five places to the right so it's one two three four five and if you have any empty gaps fill them with zeros in which we get a number that is 502,300 with number four which I'm just going to do over here we've got 3.19 times 10 to the power of one so I start off by writing my a value and here I'm only going to move the decimal point one place only going to move it there so my decimal point is going to go here so what is this number it's 31.9 so don't automatically think that every number in standard form is going to have zeros at the end you could have a little question like this where it's all just about talking moving the decimal point one place to the left or to a certain number, number. so you might need not need to introduce any zeros it might just be a case of making the number either bigger or smaller so moving on to question five, we've got 2.9872 times 10 to the power of three. So again, I write down my A value and here I'm gonna move the decimal point three places. So it's one, two, three. So my decimal point is now gonna be there. So the actual number is gonna be 2987. Point two, and again it's always worth writing number out in neat so because this would not be allowed as a number because is the decimal point there or is it there it doesn't really show me the answer and it only takes a couple of seconds for you to write the number out again and finally with the last number which is very very similar times 10 to the 2 so here I write down my a value and here I'm going to move the decimal point just two places, so one, two. So my decimal point is going to go there, giving me a final number of 298.73. Now, as I mentioned about doing a quick way of doing this, let me just show you how to do that. Now, this is quite difficult for me to write down in words. However, it's a lot easier if I show you as it is so if I look at question and go back to question one here I've got 3.6 times 10 to the power of 3 now to do this really quickly what you want to do is as you can see I've got a power of 3 and I've got one number after the decimal point now if I do so here I've got if I just write down what I'm talking about so here the power equals 3 and I've got one digit after the decimal point now if I do 3 take away 1 which is 2 then it means I need, all I need to do is add two zeros to my a value so it's going to be 3600 zero, zero. with number 2 I get 5.87 times 10 to the power of 7 so as you can see I've got two numbers after the decimal point my power is 7 7 take away 2 is 5, so it's going to be 5, 8, 7 with 5, 0. So as you can see, you might find this a much quicker way of doing so. Number 3, I get 5.023 times 10 to the power of 5. So I've got 5, take away 3, which is 2. So all I need to do is just add two zeros at the end. Now, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And, and you might find it a lot quicker now there is a flaw with doing this method which is why it's really important that you understand standard form as the pattern the power meaning how many places you move the decimal point now the problem with this particular method is when you move on to questions like question 5 now with question 5 I've got 2.9872 times 10 to the power of 3 now with this my power is 3 but the number of digits I've got after the decimal point is 4 
Now, if I do 3 take away 4, I get minus 1, which basically means that when you get a minus number, means rather than adding zeros, what I need to do is move the decimal point in from the right one place. So then the final answer for number 5 would be 200, uh, sorry, 2987.2. And likewise with number six, I've got two nine eight seven three times ten to the power of two. Well, two take away four is minus two. So if I move the decimal point two places in from the right, it then gives me a final answer of two nine eight point seven three. So there are always going to be quick and sort of efficient ways of doing these numbers, but you also got to make sure that you do check with all types of questions because what you don't want to do is find something that only works for certain numbers. You want to try and find something that works for all numbers. Now, if that seems confusing, stress, uh, worry not, because when we move on to ones where we've got negative powers, it's definitely a lot easier. Now, when you're dealing with negative powers and converting from standard form to ordinary form, all it is is the power tells you how many zeros you're going to have at the front. So in question seven, I'm going to have two zeros at the front. So I have zero, zero. And if I copy the A value as it is, so we've got nine, eight, seven, six. Now, if you think to yourself, where's the decimal point going to be? Well, it's always got to go after the first zero. So for question seven, I can go straight into the answer. And this always works for all types of converting or uh, standard form numbers into ordinary form numbers when your power is negative. So with question eight, I've got power of minus five. So I start off by writing five zeros and then write eight one. My decimal point always goes after the first zero. Now again, if you're not too sure, you're thinking mm, that seems a bit too easy. Well, if you think about it, if we look at number seven, in my A value, the decimal point is here. And what the power is telling me is I need to move it two places to the left. So one, two. And as you can see, I get the same number. Now I'm just going to have to write this out again because, like I said, you can't have two decimal play, uh, points in a number. And likewise, in question eight, my decimal point was originally here, and the power is telling me I need to move it five places to the left. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and that's exactly what I've done. However, a much easier way is recognizing that the negative power basically tells you how many numbers, how many zeros you can have at the front. So with question nine, I'm going to have four zeros with my decimal point being after the first zero. And then I'm going to write the number as it is. So it's going to be 7089, ignoring that decimal point. And then finally with question 10, I'm just going to have one zero, three, four and the decimal point goes after the first zero. And that's basically how we work with converting standard form numbers into ordinary numbers and vice versa. And like I said, this is just another way of writing numbers. Uh, you might not see the point of this because uh, at the stage that you're at, you've probably not gone into higher level sciences or gone into high level mathematics, but it's just a case of understanding another way of writing numbers. Standard form is generally used for explaining and use, working with either very, very big or very, very small numbers. But you can actually write standard form in any, so for any number, which is sometimes something you'll find in textbooks and potentially in tests. Like I said, if you have any problems or have any questions, feel free to drop me an email at 162 maths at gmail.com.